Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, let's watch a video. Lost in the Pond, great channel, preemptive like. Eight words Americans surprisingly do not use. If you are new, hello, my name is Connor. Did I say all the things? Buttons, click them. Let's go, shall we? Let's, let's go. Thousands of people stood in line to say goodbye to our longest reigning monarch. You? And this very quickly became the most British thing ever because something we like even more than rain is queuing up for stuff. This is one of the more aggravating things, okay? Because at first I'm like, where, where is queuing not a thing? You know, it, it, it was almost like, okay, so you think that people in other countries just cut lines, but then, so, so you, so you queue in places where other people in other countries might not, like for getting on a subway, for example, something like that, where I wouldn't really, I would expect like a, a general line queue, but n not like single file. Uh, you know, people start lining up from the time they go down to the subway. So that, that that's just been a frustrating one. I'm just like, where? Okay. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm hey. on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to words, specifically words that I used all the time in Britain and fully expected to use again in America. Only America, being full of surprises, taught me that not every word we use is universal within the English-speaking world. One word that is universal is subscribe, so do that now if you haven't. On this channel, I've looked extensively at American English words that aren't very common in Britain. And now, just as Queen Elizabeth II would surely have wanted, Lost in the Pond is going to do the very same, but in reverse. Here are eight surprising English words that Americans don't really use. Cool. Argy with some of these words, you can almost Argy hear them in an American accent, and with others, you really can't. And I'd say the latter is true for the word argy bargy. And right now, Argy there are bargy. probably a lot of Americans thinking, that's not a real word. You are a liar, Lawrence Brown. True. And I think I'd think that too if I hadn't grown up in Britain. But argy bargy is a real word, and it means to <laughs> get... Oh, that was close. I want to make sure to guess. I've never heard that. This is the first time in my life hearing argy bargy. I'm going to guess it means like just like rushing into somewhere, like barging in, just like going in like, oh, uh, like bull in a china shop kind of thing. It's like you're being argy bargy. That's my best guess. So into a real audible argument with somebody. And while it sounds like it. Oh, argument. Oh humorous word that belongs in Monty Python or something. Argy bargy can be a pretty serious matter. See also handbags. You're, all, you're confused, I can tell. That's okay, but after this video, I just want to hear Americans using argy bargy in a sentence, because just how weird would that be? Argy bargy. Because you, you really... Argy bargy. Argy bargy. Yeah, argy bargy. It's kind of a... a... It's not a very fun word to say because it's like R, you have to pronounce the R and it's kind of like a weird argy bargy. Argy bargy. They sound out your R's and it just takes it to a new level of completion. Raleigh. Like a fight? I think it's well known that Britain is well known for its well known rainfall and almost every human on the island has to have some way of protecting themselves from that rain and I'm not just talking about bus shelters although that is oh, my preferred umbrella. method. No, I'm talking about umbrellas like the invisible one that I apparently have here. Umbrellas is of course the standard name that I think we both use in Britain and America umbrella. but in Britain we also like to use the word brolly. It just sounds nice. It almost gives a sense of quaintness to the rain. In America for the most part i think you Ella, have a different relationship Ella, with a, rain and that a. could be sorry the rihanna song came into my head the rain that brings that song brings me back like to eighth grade it just eighth grade dance dances 
In America, for the most part, I think you have a different relationship with rain. And that could be because in many parts of the country, when you get rain, it absolutely belts it down for five minutes and then stops. So you don't even need an umbrella in that situation. I, I don't know where I'm going with this because Americans definitely use umbrellas. They just never called them brollies. What they did call them at one point in time was a bumba shoot. Some Americans I've spoken to think that bumba shoot was a British word, but it turns out that it was actually coined in the United States. That's not a real word. You are a. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh no. Gives a sense of pain for five minutes, and the Americans definitely. Bumba shoot. It sounds like a funny word, okay? I don't know why I'm laughing. Some Americans I've spoken to think that bumba shoot was a British word, but it turns out that it was actually coined in the United States, and most British people have never heard of it. Kiki. Oh no. Cheeky. I think cheeky means... Okay. People have told me this. You guys aren't very... I think cheeky means, like, your cheeky C word. It means, like, you're, you're being, uh... You're, you're, like, in... You're... Rude isn't the right word. You're just being... Cheeky bastard, 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 bastard. You're being, uh, 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 like a, a kid being rude and like just, uh, words. Cheeky. This used to be a big part of my vocabulary. Because in Britain, if you call somebody cheeky, that just means that they are a little bit mischievous. Yeah. They're sort of like... Okay. Adorable in a I can't believe you did that kind of way. And so it's often coupled with an equally mild... In Britain, if you call somebody cheeky, that just means that they are a little bit mischievous. They're sort of adorable in a I can't believe you did that kind of way. And so it's often coupled with an equally mild insult like sod or so-and-so. You cheeky little so-and-so, sorry. I thought it was more rude to s I thought it was more like you, you, it, I thought it was more like you're pissed off at someone. Well, that was the best impression I could do. She doesn't have a beard. And as I sit here now just sort of reacting to these words, I can't really think what the American equivalent would be. Oh, you cheeky. You little shit. Like that. Like you. Sorry, I swear. You little so-and-so. That it sounds weird, so there's got to be an alternative. I can't think of any. I was going to say something, and then I hit stop recording by accident, and now I forget what I was going to say. So. I can't think just, of any, so just let me know in the comments below. Any. And while we're on the subject, just a cheeky shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Something I've learned in my 14... Slash lost in the pond. Porn? I don't know. Something I've learned in my 14 years of living in America is that some things just take on a different name due to branding. And one of those things is something that I've always referred to as cling film. As you can see on here, I was that way is not how Americans do it. Plastic wrap is the generic... Well, not really, actually term here. But when I first moved here, my wife was referring to saran it by wrap? the mysterious name of Saran Wrap. Yeah, that's what I call it too. Which I believe is a brand name, but I can tell you this, that Saran... Isn't Saran... Isn't that like a type of gas that was used in World War I or something? Wrap, plastic wrap, or cling film, does work on either side of the pond and know. is very effective for shutting up YouTube sensations. This... Don't try this at home, folks. There's a bit of a breathable hole. I'm just going to see, should I do the rest of the video like this? Probably there's a bit of a glare. I don't know why I did any of this. It was <laughs> um, by the way, I take pride. It is an art to, to getting out a piece of saran wrap because it, it can so easily go badly. Just crinklage. It's just so that I could show you that cling film is exactly the same on either side of the pond, no matter what we call it. Thanks, Lawrence. Next up, and I can't even read it, because that's in the way. Next up, flyover. Flyover, like...
flyover. Um, like an area you fly over? I don't know. I have no guess. Kurge. I uh, I don't even have a guess. Where I grew up in the English town of Grimsby, oh, there is. Yeah. Oh, never mind. There's a part of road that you're driving along and suddenly it goes up over the stuff underneath it. And my whole life, this was referred to as the flyover. And it was magical when I was a kid because when we drive over it as a family, I imagined we were in the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which makes no sense. The cars don't actually leave the ground. But when you're a kid and you hear the word flyover and the car is going up, you can very easily convince yourself that you are in fact Dick Van Dyke. But I quickly learned that in America, where these things are very commonplace, I have no word for the, I, uh, I don't have a word. The word flyover isn't used. Instead, they refer to it as an overpass. Oh, and that's true. probably sensible because Americans do use the word flyover when referring to flyover true, true, states, true, true, true. as in states in the middle of yes, the country exactly. that, that you was bypass my... when flying from, say, New York to San Francisco. That was my original thought that I couldn't articulate. Peckish. Peckish. Cheap? I don't know. Just like America, Britain has its own words when it comes to food. Think of chips instead of fries. But it also has words specifically pertaining to the eating of food and the feeling of being hungry. And one of those words is peckish. Just about every 11 a.m. that I spent in Britain would see that word emanate from I'm my starving. lips. And I can already hear my wife's cousin Chad going, what does it mean, Lawrence? But in an American accent. And peckish just means hungry. So for example, I'm feeling a bit peckish. I might have a nibble. And for some reason, I imagined Hannibal Lecter while I said that. So to clarify, we do use it about food and not people. And I guess I would use the word starving, but I, I guess starving is like a bit strong of like, a, but I don't think I'm just like, oh, I'm starving. Before we yeah. get onto this, I have heard it said that the word peckish did used to have a bit of traction in the United States, but it's become archaic. That one felt sort anyway. of familiar, like peckish. I'm like, maybe I have heard that word in that context. In the United States, but it's become archaic. Jacket potato. Baked potato? Anyway, potatoes. This, as it is, is a potato that is straight out of the bag. Nothing has yet been done to it. But there are many things we could do to this. We could fry it, we could roast it, we could boil it, Bake or it. we could make it into what Americans refer to as a baked potato, and it makes... I feel like if I didn't see the split-second frame of him having a potato after the words, I, I maybe I would have thought it... It's maybe it, it's not connected to potato and it's just you that. are in fact baking it in the microwave usually because I'm lazy. But it did take me a few goes at describing that very type of potato to Americans before I realized that we don't call it the same thing. To us, at least in England, that would be called a jacket potato. And why jacket? Because we're constantly thinking about the weather, but also because oh, when you cut like it in that. half, the sliced skin looks like a jacket. Yeah, I guess, guys. I don't know if I'm with you on this one. All right. And as far as the microwaving goes, it works. Like, if, if I... I love potatoes, okay? It seems very bland, but they might be my favorite food, okay? Honestly, if I think about it, maybe steak. Steak and potatoes, asparagus and broccoli. Steak potatoes. Oh, so good. With some Worcestershire sauce, actually. Um, what was my point? Oh, yeah. If I like, I like, I'm like, want it really quickly, fine, but it just doesn't compare to, to having it in the oven. Although it does take like up to an hour to, to cook a baked potato. So I, potato, I get it. Which I suppose is just another way of making our food feel like people. Don't tell Hannibal Lecter that. And now for the final word, a word that I've seen all week on news outlets in both Britain and America, and the very word that prompted this entire video, and that word is Q. Thousands of people stood in line to say goodbye to our longest reigning monarch. And this very quickly became the most British thing ever because something we like even more than rain is queuing up for stuff. Ideally in the rain, so long as you've got a brolly and a jacket potato. And the queue became such a prominent part of the week's headlines that it's very 
very definition seems to have evolved before our eyes. I can almost imagine a world in which, 10 years from now, people will use the queue to refer specifically to that time that they queued up for 407 years to say goodbye to Liz too. Anyway, that's a long-winded way of arriving at the Isn't fact people... that Americans on the whole... If someone cut that line, I would be so upset. I... Don't use the word to. Anyway, that's a long-winded way of arriving at the fact that Americans on the whole... I don't care who you are. You can be David Beckham, or you can be... That is one time where it's like, nope. Your British people are saying bye to the Queen. I, I, I'd be like... Like, I wouldn't even... Like, if I saw David Beckham in any circumstance, I'm like, oh my god, that's David Beckham. Oh my god, look. If it was in that scenario and I saw him and he was cutting, I'd be like, get the hell out of here. Get back of the line. Can I have a photo with you, sir? Don't use the word Q. All right. They didn't even reform. On the whole, don't use the word Q. Okay. Q is one of the words that I... I it, it, it's such an a well-known word that people use in Britain, and so it's kind of hard for me to tell if it's ever used in some context in America, but him saying it's used in Boston, I live near Boston, um, sort of like, like I, if you live in a place where it's not well known in, in the U.S. and like you're abroad and people ask where you're from and you don't want to be like, oh, Rhode Island, Providence, you're just like, oh, Boston or New York, you know, something that they'll know. So very close here. I don't know why I said that. But I I want to say we do sometimes use the word Q. It's, I They don't know. didn't even reform the spelling of it to remove all of the vowels, which would have been fair yeah, enough. Q Instead, they just Q simply call it a line, which when you're thinking about it under certain circumstances, we do that in Britain too, especially when referring to the monarchy and the next in line to the throne. And that's it for this episode. Of course, there are many more such words that didn't catch on in America, so let me know your favorites below. I'm Lord Lawrence Brown, go and follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that I don't have to. Until the next video, goodbye. I think that when I hear Q as opposed to line, I think more of a wait, like a wait time. I don't know why, maybe it's just me, but I, I, I think of it that way. Whereas a line, I just. Like, I, I feel like if you're in a Q. I feel like if you're in a queue for something, you don't have to be physically in it. But if you're in line for something, then then you're sort of standing in line. If that way, it's, if that if that makes sense. Love you guys. Hope you're all doing well. Would appreciate any comments, any answers to my questions, especially on uh, videos like this talking about you know word differences where kind of lost and i think sometimes people can you know say well you know we don't use this one that much and so i'm, I'm wondering which of these are more universal in britain and maybe some are more regional you know anyways hope you guys are doing well and i'll see you next video bye guys